So that's my discussion for today. That's the end of my incredible monologue. And I think without further ado, a Mountain Dew, uh, in reference to our incredible guest that's about to join us, let us bring the incredible, the one, the only, Boogie2988 onto the phone lines to join us in the world today. Let's uh, go ahead and... Mm. Uh-huh. Let's go. Uh-huh. Hello. Hello, hello. Hello. Mr. 2988, how do you do? How you doing? How's it going, brother? Mr. 298, that's a first. I like that one. <laughs> how you doing, neighbor? I'm good, man. Good to see you, dude. Oh, bro, tell uh, introduce your dog to everybody. Oh, this is my little puppy, Samuel J. Puppystein. <laughs> and uh, ever since this whole COVID breakout thing started happening, he just will not leave my lap when I'm in, in the studio filming or doing a podcast, whatever. This dog just has to be physically connected to me 24 hours a day now. It's weird. Is it is is he uh, a, is he like in sleepy mode or is he just like hanging out chilling today? So I guess dogs have two different sleep modes. Did you know this? This is they have like REM sleep like we get and then they have like alert sleep. But oh. he's he's just staring at the wall right now. Look at this little Wall-eyed bastard. That's why I got this dog. Look at how ugly those eyes are. I no, love it. he's adorable. He's not ugly. No, he's so. You know, he's ten years old now too. What? You'd never believe it. Yeah. What? Hey, just turned ten. Oh but man. But this is this has made quarantine very doable. Think I, of that, and plus grocery delivery. Let me be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> I am putting on the COVID nineteen pounds. I promise you, right? <laughs> and everybody else, right? That's fucking great. The COVID nineteen. God damn it. Dude, you should have been a stand-up comic, let me tell you, man. Yeah, I'm not that good at standing up, Nemo. You know this. You've seen me barely walk, okay? I, I am a sit-down comedian. I am not I'm not a big fan of walking, standing around. I'm so when you got gastric bypass surgery, how much, just for the people who might not know, what? how much weight did you lose? What were you and what, what so are you? My biggest weight ever was 587 pounds. There's a video in which I weighed 587 pounds on my YouTube channel. It's one of the old Gallery of Champions videos that I was first starting out in 2006. Wow. Um, then my surgery date, I was right at like 498, 497. Yeah, because you, you have to lose some weight before you can do the surgery. Right. And then even with the COVID weight that I'm putting on, I'm sitting right now at 348. So it's... 200 some pounds lost, I think. Wow, and then, man. But, yeah. That's unreal, dude. Yeah, I'm that half is. the man I used to be, both in terms of weight and reputation. Nah, so. <laughs> no, that's not true. You you shed you shed the unwanted weight and you probably shed unwanted haters. So that's probably oh, yeah. much all it I gotta, is. I got to say the difference is, you know, like when I was like younger and they would tell me like, you keep eating the way you'll eat. Or the, you keep eating the way you eat, you'll be dead by 30. And I'll be like, cool, because I'm a nihilist and also food is delicious. So, Doc, what I'm hearing is hit a buffet on the way home, right? Like, let's party. Uh, <laughs> you know, but I ended up hitting like 40 and I'm still gigantic. And I'm like, my doctors are wrong. The thing is, if anybody is out there is like struggling with their weight, if you're out there struggling with your weight, it's quality of life, not quantity of life, dude. True. Once I was able to see my penis again, I was so excited. <laughs> Wait, okay. I, first of all, let's break down what you just said. Right. First of all, it sounds like you were fear, your first uh, in the five stages of grief that you had. I think the, the biggest problem you had was that your doctors, you felt lied to you, that you lived longer than you were expecting. Right. I was like, you son of a bitch. I'm 40. <laughs> what is wrong with you? This is 10 years of unnecessary life, dude. I hit every buffet. I was at CC so much that they just gave me my own booth, dude. It was, you know, like, I don't know. So because you thought it would be over at 30, you're like, I got to fucking, I don't have that much time. I got to eat everything I can. <laughs> right, exactly. And then you're right. like, why am I still, this is the best take I've ever, okay, so now you're at 40 and you're like, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, funny. right. I'm like, man, it hurts to lay down, dude. Do you not have any idea how fat you have to be when you're in pain when you're trying to lay down? It's so bad, dude. Oh my god. Uh, I had my my feet were fat, dude. I was wearing 14 quadruple E shoes. I wear a size 12, dude. It's just my feet were so fat that I couldn't fit them in shoes. When, yeah. when you when you saw your uh, your your penis for the first time, <laughs> in the, how long? I'm sure you've seen it. Be, you had seen it, but I what? mean, you were able. To, was it like you were able to see? Because I've heard that statement from people before. What does it mean when you say 
I would like you couldn't see it ever. It was that no, much. No, no, not no matter what position I got into. If I laid on my back and like move stuff out of the way, if I had help, okay. <laughs> the only reason I knew it still exists is because my wife was checking every couple of days to see if it was still there. I had thought to have it declared legally dead at one point, dude. Okay, because I hadn't seen it in so long. But one day, I, true story, I was taking a piss and I heard a clink. Which, by the way, when you're that fat and you're pissing, it's just all guesswork, really. You're just hoping you hit the ball because you can't see it. You can't control it. It's just, it just falls out of you. But uh, I'm hovering over the toilet trying to urinate, hoping I'm hitting the ball. And I hear what sounds like a piece of glass hit the toilet. And I, I'm, I'm like, what? Did I just pass a kidney stone and didn't notice it because I'm so fat? I looked in the water, and inside, floating on top of the water, was a tiny little bottle with a tiny little cork in it. And I pulled the cork out, and inside the bottle was a tiny little note. And the note said, Dear Steve, I miss you. Sincerely, your penis. P.S. Please send pussy. <coughs> and that was what the problem was. So I knew, I knew it was still there, and that's when I decided to lose the weight. That was, that was the moment. You did it for your penis. Did it for my penis. You did it for your little man. Here's what I did not know, and this is so I thought it was really going to help my body image issues, right? I was like, man, I'm going to look better and I'm going to feel better. And sure, I you look at me right now probably and compare me to older videos on my YouTube channel, you look you're going to be like, wow, you do look better. Yeah. The problem is I'm not naked on any of these videos, and now I know what I look. I look like the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man after Ghostbusters. That's what I look like. Okay, I look like the Michelin Man blew a tire. Okay. Dude, I look like the elephant man, except if it wasn't his face, it was just his body. Oh, okay? no, that dude, is, no. I've seen is, you. No, I've seen you without a shirt on your videos. You don't look like that. Come on. Oh, dude, I literally, I, a surgeon, I consulted with a surgeon to like get uh, skin removal surgery, and he used the phrase meat apron to describe part of my body. He said, we could remove this meat apron. <laughs> what the fuck? Wait, do you have any idea what that does to your self-esteem when somebody describes part of your body as a meat apron? <laughs> Holy shit! Oh my god! Look, Holy. if if oh. <laughs> Arby's could sponsor though. Oh, absolutely! I've got the meat Arby's call. Okay, <laughs> I, I definitely, I've got the meats for real. You now have the mobility that you didn't have back in your life. Uh, yeah, that, that that's still weird to me, man. Being able to walk, you don't. I know people take that for granted, but like once I was able to like get up and actually move and go somewhere, like to my kitchen, that was that was new. You know, like I I, I mean when I went to like VidCon, when I went to these big events, I was like renting a motor scooter and getting like the the accessible wheelchairs and stuff, and 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 now man, it's just so wonderful. Sammy's grateful because he gets two or three walks a day now. So do you and, you walk him, huh? Yeah, yeah. If, uh, me and my roommate, you know, most days. Here, here's my um, question, though. What was the when you could first really walk? Where was the first place you went to? Was it Disneyland or or was there something it, else you wanted? to Really, do? it was like I was. Wow. Uh, I, it started by just walking across my house and just like getting to where because I don't have a huge. My house is very large, like twenty seven hundred square feet compared to what I've lived in, but it's not a mansion or anything. Yeah. Um. But like getting from one end of this house to the other was enough exercise at first. So then I started doing laps in the house and uh, getting all the one to, all to one uh, to one end and then back. Then finally out to the end of the driveway and back to check the mail every day. And then finally to the end of the corner and then finally to the other corner and then finally all the way around the block. And then um, just trying to do that and then starting to walk around the neighborhood. And then finally, uh, my friends are like, let's go to Disneyland while we're out there for the game awards. And I'm like, cool. And that was the first time I did a marathon. I will tell you, I wasn't able to walk for a week afterwards. That <laughs> broke me. dude. It broke me. Well, yeah. you know, they, it is mind over matter, but your muscles do have to pay for that. Yes, so, they do. Yeah, but, it was like five days of being 500 pounds. Again, is what it felt like. I just literally could not get out of bed. Jesus. Miserable. What advice would you give to people who say they can't lose the weight how would you handle somebody who says, I just can't lose weight? Are you, I mean, what that's is your me, advice? that's me. Like you're talking to me. And so I have struggled with it due to mental issues and, and, and food addiction the entirety of my life. Here's the thing. Therapy is rule number one. I mean, most surgeons won't even operate on you unless you're in therapy or have gone through therapy and like are working on the, the mental stuff. Because here's the thing. If somebody gets to be 200 pounds overweight, it's not just because Pizza Hut is delicious because it is. But it's also because you got you, some issues. You're, you're, you're dealing with some shit. 
Um, so you need to deal with your shit. And one of my biggest issues now where I'm still 340 pounds and I would much rather be closer to 200 is because I'm still dealing with my shit. Yeah. And that's that's kind of my biggest issue. So, like, deal with your shit. Like, get into therapy. Everybody needs therapy. With what's going on in the world right now, everyone needs therapy. The therapists this need therapy. Hard. That's the problem, too. Because everybody right. needs therapy. <laughs> right. Just like, Jesus. Just, yeah, that's what all therapists are doing right now, seeing other therapists. <laughs> They're too I busy for the I rest of I wonder who's the, the one therapist, the final therapist that has no one to see. You know, God, please don't let it be Dr. Phil. Oh, no, wait. Let it be Dr. Phil. <laughs> I, it I thought you're like, I thought you're saying like the alpha male. He's no. like, I am the ultimate therapist. No, he's the worst therapist, dude. Send that dude to the ranch. Can he's we send terrible. Dr. Phil to the Dr. ranch? Dr.